Hey, how's it going guys? I hope that this video finds you well as always. Uh, in this video, we are going to be covering the six different kingdoms of life. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. So the objective for this specific unit is to be able to compare characteristics of taxonomic groups, including archaea, bacteria, protists, fungi, plants, and animals. So those are the six different kingdoms that we're going to be talking about. Uh, the language objective is to be able to compare, again, compare characteristics of our archaea, bacteria, protista, fungi, plantae, and animalia by reading scenarios about various organisms. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about different characteristics that these organisms share in common, and uh, we're going to talk about some of the characteristics that they do not share in common as well. Okay? So uh, a little bit of vocabulary that we need to be able to understand for this specific topic is uh, the difference between the words multicellular and unicellular. Uh, we should understand already that a multicellular organism is one that is composed of many different types of cells. And usually these cells are going to uh, kind of interact with one another to make sure that the organism um, has a uh, sustainable uh, living condition. Okay. So unicellular is an organism that is going to be composed of only one cell. And some examples of these are things like bacteria, which are just one single cell. And we call this an organism, although it is just one cell. Another example could be an amoeba, just like the videos that you guys watch. Uh, but this is the difference that you need to be able to remember. Multicellular, many different cells. Unicellular, just a one single cell organism. Uh, another... Um, difference that you need to be able to understand is the difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes so you have to just come back to the difference between these two pro remember that means no so that means that it is an organism without a nucleus it is a simple cell pro means no no nucleus and no membrane bound organelles okay uh, some of the things that they're going to share in common with eukaryotes you we have to remember that uh, eukaryotes do have a nucleus um, and they do have membrane-bound organelles. And like I was saying, they, some of the differences that are going to be sharing in common is the presence of a cell membrane and obviously the presence of DNA, uh, also ribosomes, which are very, very important for making those proteins. Those are things that are going to be found in both. However, uh, the big main difference is that eukaryotes do have a nucleus. They're a lot bigger, more complex, they have membrane-bound organelles. Prokaryotes don't have any nucleus, uh, no membrane-bound organelles, and they are a lot simpler. Okay. Um, some of the things that we also need to know is how organisms get their energy. Well, we need to know the difference between autotrope and heterotrope. So an autotropic organism, an autotrope is an organism that makes their own food. Uh, for example, organisms that go through the process of photosynthesis, which we're going to talk about later on. Uh, but this is an example of plants. Every single type of plant that we know of basically do uh, are examples of autotropes because they have chloroplasts and they make their own food. Uh, an example of an organism is the opposite of that. It's a heterotrope. And this is an organism that must ingest or eat uh, their food in order to get their energy. So autotropes make their own energy while heterotropes must ingest their energy so that their body can get that energy out of it. Okay, now a um, little bit about mushrooms is that mushrooms are called decomposers. Now decomposers, sometimes you can label them heterotropes because they basically need their own food as well. They, uh, I'm sorry, they need to um, get their own food so they need to be able to ingest it. Uh, but sometimes we'll put them in a separate category as just decomposers, which basically absorb nutrients from dead and decaying organisms. Okay, but the, make sure that you understand the difference between these two, autotrope and heterotrope. Um, another one that is important is the last one that we're going to be able to, uh, to do is the difference between motile and non-motile. Uh, sometimes we also call non-motile uh, sessile or sessile, I think is, is pronounced. Okay, uh, this is basically the same thing. Non-motile is the same as sessile, which basically means um, not moving. So an organism that is motile is an organism that moves, that can move around, 
And an organism that's non-motile or sessile is an organism that does not move, cannot move. Okay, and this is actually a bad example because turtles do move, just be aware of that, okay? Um, now, uh, archaeobacteria, we're going to start going over the, uh, the six different kingdoms and we're going to basically uh, categorize them according to their, uh, their characteristics, okay? So, archaeobacteria is one of the kingdoms of bacteria and some of the things that we need to make sure that we write down for them is that they're prokaryotes. Again, remember that prokaryotes means that they do not have a nucleus. Okay, uh, they're most of the time they're unicellular. They can be either autotropes or heterotropes. Um, this is one of those where they can be either or. There are different examples. Uh, some of them can be photosynthetic, while others are not photosynthetic. Uh, for the most part, these are multi-organisms, meaning that they can move uh, around very much. They actually have flagella um, and some of this philia or cilia which allows them to move around their environment, okay? So archaeobacteria is interesting because these are some examples of organisms that live in very extreme environments, they live in very extreme conditions. So we call them extremophiles, okay, or extremophobes in other words. Um, some of the environments that they like to live in, is, it says here that um, they enjoy living in places with very, very high temperatures or very, very low temperatures. Uh, sometimes they live in environments that have very low pH or high pH. Uh, sometimes they can live in environments where there is very high salt concentration uh, and so on. Okay, So these are some very, very extreme uh, examples of organisms that like really, really extreme conditions. So we call them extremophobes or extremophiles. Okay, These are just examples of names, halophiles. These are examples of organisms or uh, archaeobacteria that lives in salty environments or therm uh, thermophiles, which basically thermos meaning uh, temperature. They like to live in very uh, high temperatures or low temperatures. So we need to make sure that we fill in those blanks on your notes. Uh, we're going to go to the next one is uh, eubacteria. Now eubacteria is another type of bacteria, although they tend to be very, very different actually from archaeobacteria. Uh, eubacteria are also prokaryotes. Uh, they're very simple organisms. They are unicellular. Um, again, another example of one of those that can be autotrophs or heterotrophs. Uh, some are photosynthetic. Um, these also are motile, meaning that they move around their environment. They also have the same thing that we talked about, that um, a flagella that allows them to move around their environment. But they're very, very tiny organisms. Very, very tiny. They're so tiny that you need a very special uh, electron microscope to be able to look at these organisms at this resolution that you see it here on this picture. Um, so um, they basically live almost everywhere, okay? This is the example of bacteria that is right now in your keyboard, in your hands, uh, in your stomach, you have some of these type of bacteria uh, that is actually beneficial to you. Uh, I mean, you name it, they're all over the place, in your pen, in your pencil. Um, they can be every every single surface that you may think about is covered with these little organisms, okay? And um, yeah, so for the most part, you know, ninety percent, um, very most of them are not really harmful to you. But now and then we have some that can be very harmful that can cause severe diseases. Um, but just be aware. This is why we have to make sure that we wash our hands all the time. Uh, so that we don't get an infection for from a very bad one okay some examples e coli yeah this is one of those very bad examples you do not want to get with that or salmonella uh, yeah you don't want to mess with those type of types of bacteria um, but these are two examples of the kingdom eubacteria very simple organi uh, organisms they're single cell uh, again make sure that if you want to stop the video fill in your notes for eubacteria uh, kind of similar to archaeobacteria in their characteristics, but uh, in recent years we've discovered that they're actually not so similar at the molecular level. Okay, uh, the next one is protista, and protista are the very first uh, eukaryotic organisms. So they're actually eukaryotes, they do have a nucleus, and they're a lot more complex than the bacteria that we've talked about so far. Most of them are unicellular, however, um, this is one of the very few organisms that are go, uh, or kingdoms that have a lot of unicellular eukaryotic organisms. 
Uh, they can be autotropic or heterotropic. For the most part, they are photosynthetic. Um, and obviously, they do move as well. They're motile as well. They use uh, cilia, uh, sodopods, which basically allows them to move around their environment. Um, for the most part, where they live is in uh, aquatic environments like water. This is an example of like algae and very few uh, things like amoebas and uh, paramecium's are examples of this kingdom protista and just this is what an amoeba looks like be aware that it's just one single cell and inside that cell there's a lot of complexities vacuoles um, uh, pseudopods uh, nucleus to make sure that it has all the instructions um, I don't know cytoplasm cell membrane and obviously inside of it there's a lot of ribosomes and many different organelles but it's a lot more complex and it is just one single cell. It's quite a large cell uh, compared to the bacteria, that is. So again, some more examples of these. Uh, algae, this is very, very common. If you look in ponds and things like that, it's covered in algae. Uh, Olinia and uh, uh, paramecium, amoebas, uh, these are all examples. This is actually a paramecium if you wonder what those look like. And these are examples of algae here, okay? So make sure that we cover uh, our notes uh, for the protista. I'm going to move on to the next one, which is fungi. And fungi are eukaryotes. They are mostly multicellular. They're heterotropic and also decomposers. So again, sometimes we want to put those together on the same thing. They're not photosynthetic, though. Mushrooms do not do photosynthesis. They most consume their food. Uh, they are uh, sessile, or basically uh, they do not move around very much they stuck to their place uh, and most of the time they just break down and decay organisms so some these are just some pictures some examples these include yeast mold mushrooms these are all examples of the kingdom fungi all right make sure that we fill in the notes again if you need to stop the video please do so uh, the next one is plantae and plantae are very well known to us these are eukaryotes uh, these are multicellular for the most part uh, autotropic though, they do make their own food through the process of photosynthesis uh, and they're sessile as well. They do not move around, they usually stuck to the environment, although they do grow and they uh, take over different places, but they're for the most part they're stuck to where they are born. Uh, they do have chloroplasts for photosynthesis pretty much, just a single characteristic. Uh, and you know your typical plants you probably know a lot about plants something interesting is that mosses are actually not uh, mushroom mosses are ex an example of plants okay uh, your typical trees flowering plants and all those grasses those of those are parts of plants okay so this is the kingdom plantae uh, make sure that we fill those out the next one is animalia okay and for animalia which is the last kingdom is the one that is most uh, unique and most uh, interesting to us most of the time because it's what we can see. Uh, we are eukaryotes and this is where we belong, by the way. Multicellular, uh, heterotropic organisms for the most part. Obviously not photosynthetic. We cannot. That would be pretty cool. But no, we do not make our own food. We have to consume our own food. Uh, we do move around. We're motile. Um, and some things that are interesting about us is that we made various tissues and, organ, uh, and organs. So... Plants do have organs as well, but we are a lot more complex than they are for the most part. And this is just a picture of a nice monkey, um, which is an example of your typical animal. Some more examples of animals, humans, uh, fish, um, different insects, frogs, amphibians, uh, birds, worms. All of those are examples of animals. Uh, something that is interesting, and you might maybe you didn't know this, but actually um, corals are uh, animals okay corals are animals although they do not look like so they're very much animals uh, they're very very tiny animals um, uh, anemones are also animals uh, hydras are also animals so yeah it's a very very complex uh, and interesting kingdom the kingdom animalia all right so this is the last part we're going to make sure that we uh, fill in our notes guys and i believe this is going to be all for this video I hope that you found this interest, uh, this information interesting, and I will see you on the next one. You take care now.